The Gila Bend area has as much time depth as any other area that we know of in the Southwest. The Native Americans didn't have a written language and, and the only record we have of them is the ruins, the archaeological ruins and the rock images. This is an area that has a tremendous amount in the way of the rock art. Uh, the, the sites there are some of the largest in the state. They need to be preserved. Along the Great Bend of the Gila River, there are a number of things that are absolutely fascinating and extremely important for us to preserve. One of the most important things has to do with the blend of styles uh, that are in that area. There's three major rock art styles. There's an early uh, expression that's called the, the Western Archaic Tradition that underlies everything out here in, in southern central Arizona uh, and actually much of the western United States. The Ho'okam uh, style, that area, it's characterized by both geometrics and life forms of, of various sorts. The Patayan style has far more human figures there's a famous panel that shows a big archer. There's a figure carrying a, or swinging a bolo up in the air. And those, those things tell us a little bit about not just material culture, but uh, activities, rituals, uh, actions. The Ho'okam and Patayan styles blended together. It tells us about both of the cultures. It tells how they interact and it says who's walking through that part of the world. There's a tremendous range of geoglyphs that uh, occur along the Gila River Western Desert. Geoglyphs, I'm using it as a general term here to apply to everything from uh, lining up rows of rocks in shapes to um, what some people call intaglios where desert pavement, uh, the dark black rocks on the surface of the desert are pushed aside. You end up with lines uh, that are visible. Geoglyphs can be shapes that range from human figures to circles to segmented circles to ellipses, all sorts of things. They occur along the Gila River, along the Colorado River. It's something that's been done in the western desert for many thousands of years. The exact meanings and how they're used uh, I think is still subject uh, to debate. We farm about 10 miles north of Hill Bend between the Healy River and the Healy Bend Mountains and at the present time we are growing Durham wheat. I've lived here on the farm since we got married in, in uh, 1970. Uh, we feel very fortunate to be out here where we are in the country. Anytime you have an influx of people, uh, you're gonna have development. And the more development you have, uh, then you know the land eventually is, is gonna be uh, worked. Uh, and the archeological ruins then are at risk. And uh, of course, there's always the fact that there's you know vandalism with, with more people in the area too. The rock images that are you know a thousand years old, uh, some of them are being destroyed. Uh, up near Gillespie Dam, there's people that are using the petroglyphs for target practice. There's some spray painting going on. I know the Red Rock Canyon site has experienced uh, a lot of visitation, and with that visitation has come a lot of vandalism, and people like to they like to carve their names on that sandstone rock. You know, you have to remember that um, the Native Americans didn't have a, a written language and, and the only record we have of them is the rock images and the archaeological ruins. So it's really important to study that and to preserve it as best we can. We believe that everything here in nature, in the natural world, is of uh, really of great significance because they're all associated. And then when we have things that are 
evidence of the existence of our ancestors' travels and habitation in uh, southern Arizona, such as with shrines and trails and uh, petroglyphs. These are the measures that we would wish to support in any way that we can that would provide a greater measure of protection for many of the things that we find that our ancestors left behind for us as messages, as I said, to continue the traditional ways of our people. We clearly are going to have to go in the direction of more public education because we still have people who are not as sensitive as they could be to uh, defacing uh, the rock art, things that are immobile, things that they, they can't protect themselves. We probably need to have more active site uh, monitoring in the area. There are a number of uh, interesting questions about Gila Bend. First of all, we're not covered with pavement yet, like the area to the north. So we can still do a lot of active field work. And there are a lot of questions of interest to archaeologists and anthropologists in general. For instance, the, uh, the transition from hunting and gathering to agriculture, the interaction of different populations and how they learn to get along and adapt to each other. The idea of cultures existing on, on, in frontier zones as the Ho'okam occupation was here in that 800 to 1150 uh, time period. There are any number of interesting anthropological questions and issues that could be explored now while we still have the opportunity to do so.